Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the virgin martyr Saint Agatha implore your compassion for us, O Lord, we pray. For she found favor with you by the courage of her martyrdom and the merit of her chastity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let brotherly love continue. Do not ne neglect hospitality. For through it some have unknowingly entertained angels. Be mindful of prisoners as if sharing their imprisonment and of the ill-treated as of yourselves, for you also are in the body. Let marriage be honored among all, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge the immoral and adulterers. Let your life be free from the love of money, but be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Christ Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be waged upon me, even then will I trust. For he will hide in me in his abode in the day of trouble. He will conceal me in the shelter of his tent. He will set me high upon a rock. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in your anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. King Herod heard about Jesus, for his fame had become widespread, and people were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Others were saying, it is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. Herod was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of, wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. Herodias had an opportunity one day when Herod... On his birthday, he gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. His own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and the guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even the half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? Her mother replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give it to me at once on a platter of the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of its oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison and brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
forgive me for not preaching about the beheading of John the Baptist, our patron saint of this church, uh, but I want to talk about uh, the first reading. We, for the entirety of the last four weeks, we have been hearing from the letter to the Hebrews uh, in, our, in our first reading. Uh, for me, it's been different this time around. I've heard and read the letter to the Hebrews probably dozens of times, and yet it seems that I'm appreciating more this time around, paying attention to the words and sort of how they're laid out. And in the passage that we just heard in our first reading today, there were three things that the author to the letter of the Hebrews, many think it was St. Paul himself, there's three things that he addresses as sort of an outline of what living like a Christian should be. And the first thing he says is to be hospitable. He uh, says to be kind to our neighbor. Why? Because you could be entertaining angels. It certainly happened to Abraham and Sarah uh, when they entertained the three men. And uh, you do hear, uh, in my line of work, you do hear stories of people who sort of appear out of nowhere and, uh, and disappear once you've helped them or they have helped you in some way. Could they be angels? I don't see why not. The second point that the author of the letter to the Hebrews makes speaks of sexual morality. He says, God will judge the immoral and the adulterers to keep the marriage bed undefiled. And then the third point he makes is to be free from the love of money. He tells us to be content with what we've had and to trust in the Lord, not in, uh, in material goods or even in ourselves. And so essentially, if you do these three things, trust in God uh, rather than money, practice bodily purity, and be kind to others, you'll be on the right track. And the reason for that is because, well, it covers all the bases. It covers our relationship with God, it covers our relationship with others, and it covers our relationship with our own self. And so to me, this would be a good, uh, a good examination of conscience before confession or before we go to bed at night. Uh, it's a good way to see where our, knife, or where our life needs improvement uh, through the help of God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless us, God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless us, God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all souls of the Church. May the offerings we bring in celebration of Blessed Saint Agatha win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Agatha, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you at need of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and James our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed Saint Agatha a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.